shoot, shoot, shoot. Oh, never mind. <laughs> hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, today is the second Friday of the month which means it's time for the plant-based kitchenista, Chef Kelly Williamson. And she's going to be preparing something I can't even pronounce, but it sounds like it's Italian. But before I introduce her, I just want to thank everyone so much who pre-ordered my new book, Sweet Indulgence. Please be sure to save your receipt. We are creating over $1,000 worth of exclusive bonuses for anyone who buys the first five days it comes out or before. So please save your receipts. Now, I know that it's lower on Amazon now, so Amazon has a price guarantee. So whatever you paid for it, if I, when it's shipped, it's lower, they'll rebate you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I really want to become a New York Times bestseller and people buy in advance. Yes. And over the first five days, it really helps. So without further ado, I can't say this, Kelly, pasta il for, for what are you I'm making? Formiana. Okay. How do you I get Formiana? Yes. How do you be, how do you be so fancy? <laughs> it's actually just means pasta in one dish, but it's just fun. So. Okay. That sounds great. What kind of pasta are you using? We are going to be using the uh, chickpea pasta, so the bonza. So we're making the, the chickpeas so everybody can use the, the different ones. And we're actually doing the, um, what are we doing? The rotini, making it fun. That is perfect for people, especially like if they're gluten-free, then they can use exactly. chickpea pasta. Yep. Yep. Nice. Perfect. All right. So we're ready to go. Ready to rock and roll all, all right. night and party every day. Okay. Woohoo. Bye. Your book. It's great. I've tried a lot of the recipes. They're great. So thank you. Yes, you're welcome. Okay. So pasta. So pasta a la. So formiana. That just basically means pasta in one dish, which what a better way to do it, right? Pasta in one dish without dirtying a lot of dishes. And then you've got everybody going ooh and ah all over it. That's a great thing to have. And then squash boats. So these are two things that are really pretty once they're put together that are good for Valentine's Day because, you know, Valentine's Day is right around the corner. So let's get started. So I've done a bunch of tomatoes, but the first thing we need to do is we need to get the sauce going. You do not have to, if you want to make this for family, you could always, you know, buy jar sauce if you want to. There's plenty of those out there. So that is up to you if you want to make it super simple. This is just a way to make it uh, just a fresh sauce. Get that plugged in really quick. There you go. All right, so if you're looking at the recipe, if you're following along, so we've got crushed tomatoes. I love the San, um, the San Marzano. Those are my favorite because they tend to be a little bit sweeter. So I've just got those in there. If you can't find crushed, because I've noticed in the stores lately, there's a lot of things that you can't find. Like Jerry um, went shopping for basil and had to go to four different stores to find fresh basil. So if you can't find San, um, the San Marzano, whatever your favorite are. And if you can't find them crushed, use whole tomatoes, doesn't matter. All right, we got a one clove of garlic. Add a little bit more garlic if you're a garlic lover, which we are here in this house. We love garlic and onions. And then we're going to do a little bit of vegetable broth in here, but then we're also going to add in the oregano. So we've got about two tablespoons of dried oregano. We're also going to add basil, but we're going to add that fresh towards the end. Let me add a little bit of vegetable broth. I'm just going to eyeball it. And then we're going to mix it. What you doing for Super Bowl, Kelly? Yes. You got any plans? Got any plans for Super Bowl Sunday? We are going to be making nachos here at the yeah. house, but we're going to be doing a, of course, a plant-based um, cheese sauce. The Jerry loves nachos. Whatever I make those. And then, then we're just going to watch the game because we want Kansas City to lose. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Is that where you're from? I'm from Kansas City, yes. But we are, if you're a Broncos fan, you don't like Kansas City. So we're going for San Francisco. Oh, wow. And then you've got uh, McCaffrey, which is, he's from this, from Broncos. So his father played here. So we're kind of rooting for him too. So one of those things. Yeah. But a lot of people there can't say they're like, how could you not like Kansas City? And I'm like, just because we're a Broncos fan. That's All right. So, so tomatoes, sliced tomatoes. So you just want to have ones that are that are um, as ripe as you can get them. So you just line your dish with your tomatoes. You just see, I'm just lining it. 
great dish if you've got some tomatoes that are starting to get a little too ripe. I'm going to half some of these. So we go up the sides. I also bought some heirloom tomatoes, which are really pretty. So I'm going to put those on the top because I thought that looks a little bit more like Valentine's Day. Oh, so this is your Valentine's Day meal. It is. We were thinking of just going out. It, it's Valentine's Day here every day. Well, for Jerry, it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <gasps> uh -huh. you know, it, for people that don't know you, it kind of remember that show, was it Home Improvement, where, you know, you didn't see the guy across the fence, but Tim talked yep. to him all the time, you know? Yep. That's what it's That's like. Jerry. Or, or or like on Cheers, you know, Vera, you never you never saw her. Or or Maris on Frasier. That's what that's what Jerry is. He's he's a fictional character that we refer to. Exactly. But he eats a lot. He eats a lot and he eats very well. Yeah. That way. So there it is. Oh, I just knocked one over. You should so write a book. One. You should write a book, Jerry's Favorites. Jerry's Favorites, exactly. Because everybody's like, oh yeah, that's Jerry's favorite. So there it is, line. That's all you need to do on the bottom. Then you take your sauce, pour your sauce over it. Make sure you smooth it all out. And I would think that, you know, especially like Valentine's Day, there's nothing better than red pasta because it's just, you know, it fits that, fits that look and feel. Squash boats are really, really pretty. You can eat them all week long. All good. <laughs> Was gonna do dessert, but I'm like, nope, Chef AJ's got her book out. We'll let Chef AJ do all of the desserts. All right, pasta. So I already cooked the pasta. I did it al dente. So rotini, this is the chickpea pasta. So by Bonza, which is actually really good. So we're just gonna add that in. And the reason why I picked rotini, it's just because it's fun. It's something a little bit different. It's not like, you know, it's not like spaghetti or penne. And actually the rotini and stuff with the actual pieces around with the way that it's spiralized will pick up the sauce and give you a really good, well, it's like the sauce and stuff will really make sure it mixes in there really good. All right, whoops, as I knocked one off, just do a quick little stir. If you wanted to make it a little bit easier, you could actually just add the sauce into the pasta and then pour it in this way, but I'm gonna do it the, the step way. If I was home doing it myself, I would add the sauce in with the pasta and then mix it all in. Like that. And then, off the floor so I don't step on it. Then you take the rest of your tomatoes and you line your top. Whoops, one thing I'm gonna do first, basil. Is it Jerry basil? had to go to four different stores. You've got to have fresh basil. Basil or basil? You know what? It depends on where you're from. So I've heard it both ways. And I've heard like if it's south, I've heard it more basil. And if I if it's more like say in like Midwest, I've heard basil, but then more like the East Coast and things are basil. So I'm just doing all I did, as you can see, I just wrapped it up kind of like in a like a cigar. And then I'm just doing nice little cuts, or you could use your scissors. And it gives you this nice little chiffonade cut. So it's like ribbons. We like lots of basil, basil. All right, tomatoes. Let's do. I'm gonna grab like, my purple like toma tomato. Tom oh, purple tomatoes oh, and green tomatoes. Yeah, so we're going to add it to the middle. You can tell they're very, very ripe. So this is one of those things too that you could buy your tomatoes a week ahead of time and then make it. I love yeah. the taste of the green ones and I don't know why. I'm not a, I'm not a big green tomato. Those will be for later. OK. 
Okay. That's going to go in the oven right now. And then when it comes out, we're going to add some fresh from some fresh uh, basil or basil to it. And away it goes. You know, actually, one thing I did forget. Zucchini. So. Getting inside of myself. Those, do you ever see those things that people make where they, you know, it's like they it goes round and round with the zucchini and the. Yes, yeah, the spiralized. That's really cool. Yeah, you could definitely, you could spiralize this. You could do that, like, instead of like, if you didn't want to do pasta at all, you could do the spiralized zucchini and just add that in. So I'm just mixing this in because it gives you, because get your daily greens. So making sure you've got all your vegetables. This is the way to do it. You could actually add in yellow squash. You could do broccoli. You could do eggplant if you want a little bit more meatier um, type of a chew. That's ready. Now, back with this. See how easy it is to fix if you got if you forgot something. Yay. There we go. All right. So now it's going to go in the oven. So we've got the oven at 450, and so we're going to start. So what we're going to do is pretty much everything. If you think about it, you know you've got your raw tomatoes. Those are ready. Your pasta is already al dente cooked. So it's more like kind of heating it up and simmering everything a little bit and then getting your tomatoes more kind of a baked type of approach. So that's what we're gonna be doing. So in the oven, it's gonna go. And then magically it will show up here in a few weeks. Wow, from the magic of television. Exactly. This one's this one will be, you'll get to see the live one because I didn't make one ahead of time. Let me just rinse this off real quick. Figured we didn't need two pastas in the house, so. Are, are you really going to make that again for Valentine's Day? We will probably make, if I don't make exactly that one, it'll be something that'll be very similar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely we like pasta here. So we eat a lot of different pastas and stuff, which is really good. Oh, interesting. I never eat pasta, like ever. It just well, doesn't feel good. It's just too, my tummy just doesn't like it for some reason. I have even the gluten-free ones or the one ingredient. I do eat like spiralized stuff and uh, mm -hmm. of, uh, pasta, butternut squash noodles, zucchini noodles, but just God, I haven't eaten pasta in my, even, even before I lost weight. It was just something that never just felt good in my tummy. I, I do like rice and things like that, but I don't know. I'm, I'm weird. Uh, so like if I go to an Asian restaurant, like, um, like, I'll ask them for pad thai, but instead of the noodles, I'll go just do it over rice and it's fabulous. Yeah. No, I just, there's a lot of times, I mean, I like noodles and things, but there's a lot of times and stuff that I'll just do the rice or something like that too. So it makes me really, but yeah, this one, I, I do like the bonza. So it's, you know, it's not as heavy, which is really nice. Kelly, Stephanie says, do you find that you have to cook your chickpea and red lentil pasta longer than what the package says? It depends. So this one, so if we just say with this one here, so they said six, so six to eight minutes. Truthfully, the the rotini. So when I when I do the spaghetti, yes, I find that it has to be a little bit longer because otherwise it's chewy. But when I did the rotini and stuff, I would say I was probably right about six minutes. And it was, but it was more a little bit al dente. But I also was putting it in the oven, so I didn't want to make you know I didn't want to have it where it was mushy. So yeah, lot sometimes I would say depending on the brand. Bonza's pretty good about staying about where it needs to be, but some of the other brands and stuff, definitely you've got to cook it a lot longer. And then if you cook it too long, just like if you're doing like orzo, it goes mushy and then sticky, which then it's yuck. All right, we are going to get the squash boats going and these are fun. We're going to decorate them a little bit with some, um, some fresh, we've got some fresh grapes, red grapes, because grapes are great right now. And that's, you know, you could feed your honey. You could feed your honey grapes. <laughs> Sorry, Jerry. No, yeah. <laughs> not feeding you grapes. <laughs> All right. So squash boats are really fun. Turn wrap. Hot. So I put the squash in the oven because I figured you didn't want to want, you know, wait 20, 30 minutes and stuff for the squash to be done. So this is the delicata. You could do, you know, you could do the butternut squash. You could do... Acorn squash, if you can't find the delicata, because not the delicata is not always in stores. Um, but these are really cute. They actually had the, the four that I was looking for. So all I did was, of course, I sliced them in half. And then always in the middle, when you get squash, you're always going to have the seeds and kind of the extra little bit of the squash there. 
And so I just scrape that out, but don't throw away your seeds on this one. So this is one you're going to incorporate the seeds back into it as more like the, the kind of the texture and stuff that, so it's really truthfully no waste, which is nice. So when you do something like this, and let's just say that you wanted to have a little bit more, so the squash, not as much, and maybe more of the, the filling in there, you could just scrape this out a little bit. It's not like your um, spaghetti squash, but if you scrape this out a little bit and you can add it into the, the different ingredients here that we're making, you could do that too. So then you have more, more of a boat. But these were in for probably, I just put water or you could put vegetable broth. Um, you can see I'm just draining a little bit out. These were probably in for about 20 minutes, um, 25 minutes, 350. And they're really soft and you've got these great pieces of squash here. But these are all the little boats. And I do this a lot with spaghetti squash and I scrape all the spaghetti squash off and then put things in the middle and it's delicious. So these are all nice and warm and ready to go. Put those to the side. So the filling, the filling's the fun part. All right, so if you're following along, we've got, we've got vegetable broth here, but we're gonna do that here in just a second. So we're gonna add in this pan, saute pan, let me plug this back in. That little bit of drizzle of vegetable broth. So this is a low sodium and you can find also no sodium, which is really nice. It used to be in the store, especially here in Colorado, you couldn't find. It was just always the regular vegetable broth, but now they're carrying everywhere the, the low sodium or the no sodium, which is great. We love that. Because the vegetable broth and stuff has a lot of sodium in it. So really don't need it. All right, so we got there, and then we're gonna add, gonna add mushrooms. If you don't have vegetable broth, of course, stock, water, any of those things. So these are portobello mushrooms. So two things that you can do. So the portobellos, what I said is, is the gills removed. So these were the baby ones, so I didn't remove the gills. But if you get the big caps, you're gonna wanna remove the gills if you, because otherwise what ends up happening is the gills turn, it's kind of those that brown that's on the inside. So if I show you, like if this was a, a big, big mush, portobello mushroom, you can see the gills there. And you just take a spoon and scrape it out or fork, whatever you wanna do. Um, and the reason why is it turns everything brown that it goes around in. It's not harmful to you because you can actually put it in recipes. So like um, Kathy Fisher has a great, she's got a great, um, like a stew recipe. And you put the gills in with the mushrooms and then it turns the sauce like a nice color brown. So you can use them that way. But when you're doing things that are more light, take the gills out. So these are just baby because it didn't have any caps. Couldn't find any of uh, the portobello caps. So we just did the baby bellas. So rough chops, just add it into the dish and we're going to saute them up. And what's fun with this too, so if you make these two recipes together with the extra tomatoes, you know, you can make a great, you know, a house salad or something like that. But let's just say you don't want to do a salad. You could always add the tomatoes into here too. So you could use your crushed tomatoes and don't worry about them going bad. So just saute them up, getting the moisture out. I am not a mushroom fan, so um, the texture thing, I think, with me, and a little bit of the smell, but one of the things and stuff that, you know, when I do, I cook a lot with mushrooms, and I grind up mushrooms, and like, you know, different types of, you know, veggie loaves, and all those, it's more that when they're on something like this, or a pizza, Jerry gets them, so he just gets lots of mushrooms. That's the one thing I can't learn to love. I've tried. Mm. I've tried to, and you know, people are like, well, eat them fresh on a salad. And I'm like, no, they're, they're just creepy little fellas or girls. I don't know what they are. I just, I can't, I just don't like them. Yeah. And I, I'm okay if they're mixed up. So if I grind them up and I make like the, the veggie loaf or something like that, and I don't, you know, it's not like I can like big chunks of it. I'm okay. But when they're on pizzas and stuff like that, mm, no. Um, Adam wants to know what kind of squash are those? Delicata. So D E L I C as in cat A T A delicata. They're so good. They are. They're really good. And it's and I mean for flavor wise, I'll just grab I'll grab one. So you can tell they're just like I mean it's just like cream when they're baked. No, definitely a squash flavor. A little bit like what if I would say with my palate, a little bit nutty almost but very sweet. So, you know, adding things like the mushrooms and the Brussels sprouts and the kale and things like that that are, are not on the sweet side and the onions and things are gonna, and rices, it's gonna be really actually really good. So you're gonna have that sweet of the squash 
and then more of a kind of the savory and stuff of all the vegetables. But it's actually much sweeter than a lot of the different um, squashes and stuff that are out there. I found, like I said, I found them in the store right now. They you usually don't find them year round. They're usually about this time of year that you're going to find the delicata. But if you can't find the delicata, use acorn or use, you could use um, butternut squash, you know, just change it out and just and completely change up the recipe a little bit. And those are all really good too. Okay, mushrooms are going. So they're, you can, sell, you can tell that they actually are cooking down, a little bit of moisture still in them. All right. And then we're gonna do the pearl onions. So pearl onions, I actually kept the bag out. So you can get, you know, you can buy pearl onions that are in with all the regular onions. You have to boil them and then peel them down. It's a lot easier just to buy, this is bird's eye, the white pearl onions that are frozen. And then you just, you know, take them out, thaw them out a little bit, and then just rough chop them up. If you can't find pearl onions, then I would go with shallots because you want to have like a lesser, um, you don't want to have such a, like a, a potent, like some of the onions right now, I think are just really, really strong. And so if you go with the shallots and stuff, you'll actually be more into like the pearl onions. But if you can find the pearl onions frozen, go for it. All right, so I'm gonna add in. So we got here, we've got um, we got a 14 ounce bag of the pearl onion. So just one of the frozen bags. If you don't like onions that much, then you can cut really, really far back if you wanted to. But once you put the rice in and things like that, you want those onions. So just mixing those in. A little bit of moisture with those also because they were frozen. So you just wanna make sure you just, you're sauteing that out Except for a minute. Smelling good. I can smell the basil and everything back in the back. It smells really good with the pasta. All right, so we got in the pearls, so we're just waiting those to go for to cook up. And I would say if you don't like mushrooms, so if you're like Chef AJ and I, you could actually probably substitute in, like if you didn't want to do mushrooms, you could substitute in some eggplant, which would be really nice because that's going to give you that little bit more of the, the chewy feel. If you don't like eggplant either because I know some people really don't like eggplant then skip it all together stay out you know stay away from the eggplant and stay away from the mushrooms and then with everything else that you're adding in you're still going to have a really good flavor we're probably one of the few that don't like mushrooms like everybody else I talk to loves mushrooms all right so those are going Brussels sprouts Brussels sprout sprouts Sprouts. sprouts are very plentiful in the stores right now, so easy to get. You can actually just take them, and once you chop off the end, you can do a mandolin if you wanted to. Just watch your fingers. If not and stuff, with you know practicing knife skills, you can just slice them up, and then you've just got you know just great Brussels sprouts. You don't also, if you don't want to even do that, you can go into the convenience areas of the grocery stores, and they actually have shredded Brussels sprouts. So you could do that too. Make it easy on yourself. We talk about that all the time. And if you don't like Brussels sprouts, you could also <laughs> substitute in like red cabbage or green cabbage. That would be two different ones that you could put in that would give you that nice kind of almost cabbage flavor without having the, the flavor of the Brussels sprouts. Um, Diana says, could you use potatoes as the boats in place of the squash? Oh yeah, you could. That would be actually really good. You could actually, you know, one would be really pretty would be um, sweet potatoes. So if you have those and then you'd have to scoop out a little bit of the middle, you know, when you're getting ready to put all the, the filling in there, but that would be delicious. You could do like your russet potatoes. That would be, it'd be beautiful. Why not? And then you have like stuffed, kind of like stuffed baked potatoes for days. And then if you made some of the, like I was just thinking about, if you made some of the cheese sauce, you know, there, there's some with oats and there's, there's a lot with vegetables. You could always drizzle that on top too which would be really good. So like real stuffed potato. So I'm just cooking it up. You wanna make sure on your Brussels sprouts when you're actually sauteing them, when it starts turning this really, this bright green, that means you're good to go. When it starts getting a darker green, that means it's usually overcooked. So you just wanna make sure you're getting that bright green look. It's almost like Brussels sprouts al dente. All right, so we're getting those going. All right, so then we got that going. So we're gonna add in some black pepper. Then we're gonna add in our paprika. 
So this is this is sweet smoked Spanish paprika. If you've got just regular paprika, the one reason I like the sweet smoked Spanish is because it gives that little bit, it's sweet, but it also gives a little bit of that smoky flavor, which is really nice. Like you could, if you were here and had smell vision, that's what Emerald used to say, you could smell the, the sweetness and the smokiness of this paprika. They add a little red color. All right, then we're gonna grab, grab a big bowl. Did the potatoes, you're gonna have a lot of starch, which is a good thing, you know, according to Dr. McDougall and everybody else that's out there, because you're gonna add in a cup of, of, of brown rice. I cooked wild rice. If you want to make your like it really easy, you can actually use the um, you know the rice aroni, which you see in the boxes, and they're usually like ten for what is it ten for ten a dollar each. Um, you can actually do that. Just take the spice packing out, and you get the actual wild rice. So you want a cup of that also. And it comes up by the time you end up cooking it, and you take the spice pack out, out you've got about a cup. And it cooks fast, which is really nice because you'll notice that sometimes when you do wild rice. It takes a long time to cook it and simmer it. If you do the, the rice aroni, which I think I have the pack, this one, it makes it really fast. Okay, quick stir. So you've got wild rice. You've got your brown rice. You've got your vegetables. Where do you get the inspiration for your recipes? There's a lot of times that I'll just, you know, like if I'm, because I work during the day and stuff, so let me just turn this off. Even. Um, there's, there's, I'll just kind of look at pictures and I'll look at photographs and stuff of things because, you know, what photographs are worth a thousand words. So when you look at photographs, you're like, oh, that looks good. And then I just, and then I'll sit down and be like, okay, how would I make that? And I'll just, and then I'll just whip up the recipe. And then add things into it. I always add things. That's usually my inspiration. Or when you go to a restaurant and you see, you know, things that, so if you're, you know, if you're, if you're plant-based and you're going to a restaurant that's, I don't know, like, um, like a brewery or something like that, because, you know, with work and traveling, you know, I'll get a salad and things, but I'll watch what's coming around and what they're serving. And then I'll figure out how to make that plant-based. That's a lot of, that's always the fun part. Make it pretty and make it plant-based. All right. So I've got the rice. I've got the the vegetables, I got everything else in there. So I'm gonna add a little bit of the, the lemon juice because you want a little pop of the acid. So that was about two tablespoons. That could be your next cookbook after what Jerry likes to eat. Make it pretty and make it plant-based. Exactly. Favorite, make your, yeah, make your favorite recipes pretty and plant-based. Like that, what Jerry eats. That would be a really big book for what Jerry likes to eat. <laughs> That'd probably be at least a good, I don't know, three, 400 recipes. He's funny though, because there's a lot of times and stuff I'll make things, I'll make things and, and I'll be like, you know, like he'll be like, oh, no, 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 no. I don't wanna, um, I don't like that. I don't like that Moroccan shepherd's pie. And then he tries it and then it becomes one of his favorite recipes, so. So now I'm just adding in kale. So the kink of kale, so that is the elephant ear. So you've got lots and lots of greens, the goodies. Just give it a quick stir. If you want, if you don't like your kale where it's more chewy, then feel free when you're actually, when you're cooking up the Brussels sprouts and everything else, feel free to add the kale in. But it's kind of nice to have, you know, I always I always look at like Alyssa and stuff when she's doing the raw. So it's kind of fun to have things that are more like raw and then things that are cooked together. I like that. Yep. Even though she does everything raw, but it's yep. fun to add that little bit of, the raw in there. There used to be, um, I think it's still there, a restaurant called California Pizza Kitchen, and they would mm -hmm. have like a, a pizza that had a salad on the pizza. I've seen that. I've seen that on diners, drive-ins, and dives. There's a lot of different, I think that, you know, like the California Pizza Kitchen, I think, I don't know if it's still here or not. I think it may have went out of business, but I'm seeing a lot more that they're adding like either spaghetti on pizzas or salads or all kinds of different things. So 
All right, let's grab. Cheesecake Factory used to have a Caesar salad pasta that was like, it was a hot pasta dish that was mixed with a cold Caesar salad. I bet that's good. I mean, I don't know. This is, I mean, I haven't eaten there in like 30 years, but I'm, yeah. just, <laughs> I'm just remembering dishes that were hot and cold at the same time. Now that sounds interesting. If they make it plant-based, I'd try it, <laughs> but got to make it plant-based. All right. So got everything in there. So taste-wise, if I taste it really quick for you guys. Making sure I'm not spitting something out. Nuttiness. So you get the nuttiness and stuff of the of the different rices, which is really good. And then you've got, you know, a little bit of the chewiness of the kale. And then you've got a little bit of taste of the like the, the Brussels sprouts, which is kind of like a cabbage family. I definitely tried to stay away from the mushroom bite. Um, and then you get the smoked paprika and a little bit and a little bit of the um the lemons coming through, which is really nice. Okay, so we've got these nice, like I said, these little boats. And you can see right here in the middle, this is where I pulled the seeds out. So the seeds, what I did is I just put them in like a colander and I just kept, you know, trying to get all the, the different, um, the, the inside and stuff of the squash away from it. And so I just took the seeds, kept washing them and washing them. And then I just put smoked paprika on them, put a little bit of vegetable broth and then I put them in the oven. So now, you know, it's kind of like almost making like pumpkin seeds. I have delicata squash seeds that are going to go mixed in with this. I'm gonna add a little bit in here, and then most of it's gonna go on top. All right. So the middle of it, this is the hard part, is getting the the stuffing and the kind of the filling in the middle without getting it everywhere. And you're gonna end up with quite a bit of filling left over. So if you don't want, you know, a bunch of filling left over depending on how many of the delicata squash that you're doing, half the recipe. And then that way you've got only like a half a cup of the rice. Or if you like this, you know, just the next day and stuff, and after you eat the, the squash boats, you could add in some like arugula or things like that and make some really good salads. Or stuff some potatoes. I love that idea. Sweet potatoes would be beautiful. Like your Hannah yams and that would be really pretty. Mm-hmm. And if you wanted to add something, because like I said, I was gonna, I'm gonna just the plate and stuff I was gonna decorate, and I was just thinking about that as I was looking at them. The red grapes, if you put this, if you would mix them in here, like half them, and then mix them in with the uh, with the filling, and then put them into the the delicata squash as the filling, would be really good too. It gives you that kind of little bit of sweetness and the pop of the of the even more of the freshness. That mixed in there. Once we so once these are done, so we're going to put them back in the oven. So even though the squash is actually warm, we're going to put them back in the oven and we're going to get you know just everything warmed back up again because this has been sitting here just a little bit. And then we are going to, those look really good. We are going to decorate them with, it usually says the almonds, so like almond slices. No almond slices in the store. Three different stores, no almond slices. So we're actually, I did some pistachios. So that's what we're gonna put a little bit of that on there. All right, so these are gonna go in the oven. Don't those look good? Yep. So as I said, I'm gonna do, put this in the oven because it's only gonna take a few minutes just to heat it up. I'm just gonna add some red grapes. You could also add in your fresh basil if you had ever extra leftover basil. If you do have a big box, like what, because um, that's all that we could find in the stores. If you do have a big box, always remember and stuff that you can pull your the, the basil leaves and stuff away from the stems and freeze it. So you can have nice bags of, of frozen basil in your freezer, which is 
wonderful because then you have fresh basil every year all year round hey kelly mona would like to know if the boats can be frozen you could freeze them um that wouldn't be a problem at all with that you're so i would wrap like each one of them individually and then bring them out and stuff and then you could just put it like let them kind of like fall out a little bit on the on the counter and then put them in the oven and you could either you know like if you wanted to you could actually do um bake them just a little bit and then if you wanted to make them like a little bit crispy on top put them under the broiler you could do that but yeah you definitely could then look like see i added the the grapes which just added a really nice pop of color so in they go grapes that's unusual yes it reminds me and the reason why because it's like think when i'm sitting there thinking about it and these are just, this is just like how recipes end up getting uh, created it's almost like when you used to go out and you'd get like a chicken salad or an egg salad a lot of times and stuff they would put grapes in them and so i was sitting there looking at the grapes and i'm like why not put them in that that gives a nice pop of color color and sweetness all right yeah A few more minutes on the pasta, but it is bubbly and doing great. So as of so the the amount of um, filling that I made, this is how much I have left over. So based on that was one two, so I did four, so that would be eight halves. So I probably have about two cups of the filling left over, but that's not a bad thing. Like I said, you could put this, you know, put this on a potato. You could put this in a salad. You know, pick, you know, put some arugula in that. Add some fresh tomatoes the next day. And you've got, you know, just a great, almost like a, a great rice dish. So not too much left over, which is, which is good. Are, you, then, still, you, know, are you still cooking for your neighbor? I have started. So one of the things that I talked to her about, because I need to, you know, just figure things out. I talked to her about, I said, okay, can you be my, can you be my, uh, my muse, I guess. So we're, so we're cooking things like normally Jerry and I would eat but recipes that I know would be really good out in the, um, like people would like them. So she's trying them out and telling me at 81 years old, what she likes and, you know, if this is too much or she doesn't like, she doesn't like beans at all. So no recipes with beans. It's not, she's allergic to them. She just doesn't like the texture. So I have to stay away from beans, but we've been trying her out. Let's see, we made spaghetti squash lasagna, which she loves. And she's like, yep, you can do those all the time. We made a um, potato chowder. So potato corn chowder. She'd love that. What else have we made? Oh, we made a capellini pomodoro, so a pasta dish, which was really good. Love that. So trying out, and then I've done some a couple of uh, smoothies and things because she's um, she had a couple of little issues and stuff, so she wanted to have smoothies just to be able to kind of get her strength back. So I did those, but it's been it's been really good. So what we're going to do is have her try everything, and then I'm putting together a list of things, and then we're going to go out in the neighborhood because we've got about I don't know about six thousand fifty five plus here that live here houses and stuff so we're going to go out in the neighborhood eventually how down many the road houses? Wait, how many houses do you have there it's about four or five but i think if we look if we look around it's anywhere between and they're still building so probably close to six by the time it's done is what they're saying six thousand six thousand wow that's a big yeah. community it's a very big community and they're keep like you said they keep building and it's crazy but we figure that we can go out with like flyers and they've got a facebook site and then down the road and stuff, we can we can start advertising and see if you know see if there's an interest. And I think there is because when I was doing the classes here, until the clubhouse got too full and they won't let us use the kitchen as much, but um, until they build out more space. But there was people attending. My classes were sold out all the time because people were like, "I want to learn how to do this," and then I also want to be able to take some of the food home and and have my husband try it or those kind of things. So they should make another. They should make another clubhouse then. They should. They didn't, they didn't plan the community well enough because the, the clubhouse is probably for, I'd say maybe a thousand houses is the clubhouse, the size that it was built. And then what they do is, is because the space that's in front of the kitchen is like open space. They take all the tables down and they put yoga and everything else in there. And then you can't use the kitchen space at all. So that's what's happening right now. So I've just kind of stopped doing the classes until we can figure it out. But if I can get, you know, meal prep around here to start it out, that's, that's a good start. So that's my plan. So she's trying to, she gets lucky. She gets to try out. I bring her on Sunday, this big bag full of different things that she gets to try. She is lucky. I would love to live next door to you. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's fun. She's, you know, she's appreciative and, and it's, and it's good too, because it's probably what now almost a year now, probably that, you know, we talked to her about being plant-based because she was going to, you know, going to dinner with us and, 
And now it's like, yep, I'm not going to do any, you know, I'm not doing any meat anymore. I've gotten rid of red meat, lamb, all those kind of things. Well, you're making a difference one neighbor at a time. Diana says it sounds like you're in the village in Florida, but you're in actually, what city in Colorado do you live in? So it's, it's, um, so it's called Hilltop Inspiration, which is outside of Parker, but it's like Aurora Parker. Yeah. Suburbs of that, of that area. So suburbs of Denver. Yeah. It's fun. 55 plus community. So, you know, there's, there's good, there's, you know, I'll just say that there's pluses and there's minuses of a 55 plus, um, you know, you don't have all the crazy fireworks and it's very quiet after about six o'clock, unless it's summertime and people are usually out, you know, and talking in the, the driveways and stuff. But it, like in the wintertime, not. But then you've got really nice neighbors that are quiet, but you get to, you know, they, there's a lot of get togethers and things like that. So there's, like I said, there's good and bad. But then there's also some that move in the neighborhood that want to have the power and, you know, run the clubhouses and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So that's the good and bad of all that. Yeah, that's funny. Wouldn't it be you great? Had, if you, you were in a community too, right? And uh, yeah, and our HOA was useless. They didn't, I mean, dogs were. Ugh, they just never enforced anything. And I, I, if I ever do that again, I want a strong HOA. But I have a question. Wouldn't it be great if we had one of these places that we're all, excuse me, that means it's the truth. My mom said, you always sneeze on the truth. It was all vegan, plant-based, whole food plant-based. Like everything mm -hmm. that was there. So like, you know, the, the grocery stores and the, you know, the restaurants, if there was any things like that to eat or you know, and you could do like, even if you could do like, it, like the fun thing would be is like everybody comes together for community dinners and you know that whatever is being made and stuff, you know, if, if like one, like say a team makes everything, everybody can come and have those, you know, when you see them like the farm tables and they have the really long tables and people could just join. How fun. It's like almost like a commune a little bit, but you know, it's all plant-based, which means it's good. <laughs> we don't have a big leader or anything like that, but that would be fun. Jerry and I'd move there. Blue zone. Jerry was talking about blue zones and stuff, but yeah, if you could have a place where everybody could come together and share recipes and and just be healthy and places to walk and exercise and you know all those things, but your you know your neighbors were there to help you, be nice. Tennessee, California. Tennis and yoga girl says I have squash in the oven now. I have all the ingredients. I'm going to make it right now. Your dish looks delish. Thank you. Yeah, I know. I wish I wish somebody would make a master plan community. But I mean, how can they enforce it? Like, you you know, when it, I mean, they can enforce it in terms of if they had a restaurant, but you can't like force people to be vegan. Can you? That'd be cool. I, I love that. that was just... No, they would be somebody would somebody would do a lawsuit and say I couldn't move here because I was decided I was, you know, plant based and didn't want to be plant based or something like that. But if you could, you know, but but I really think that if you, you know, just thinking about it, if you really had the community that was really involved in it, and everybody was like, you want to move here because of that and you want to live a longer life and, and all those kind of things. I, you wouldn't probably have to even enforce it. I think people would just do it because I think people are looking for a different, especially like baby boomers that are retiring out and mm -hmm. stuff are looking for a different lifestyle and they're looking for something different that, that lets them live longer because they've, you know, I would say some of the baby boomers haven't been nice to themselves because they, you know, baby boomers tend to overwork, you know, overwork, overstress over everything. And, and, you know, have helicopter, you know, the helicopter kids and everything like that. I think it's, you know, if you could have a place to just be, be, be nice. I think, they, I think they'd enjoy it. Well, you know, there was a couple of places we passed on because it's one thing to have a restaurant that's not vegan. I mean, of course the, you, you don't have those, but a lot of the places, at least the newer ones everywhere in California requires you to spend a hundred dollars a month at the restaurant. And I said, that's not fair. There's not one thing I can eat there. They go, well, you can get bottled water. I'm like, yeah, a hundred dollars yeah. a month bottled water that sounds great yeah the place because we're we don't with us there's no restaurant or anything like that here but heritage eagle bandward has a golf course there's that's part of it you have to you know you don't have to buy into the golf course but if you buy into the restaurant you have it's anywhere a hundred's cheap because usually it's like anywhere between three and five hundred that you've got to wow. spend in the restaurant which well, is a well, lot see, I, I don't know why like and i don't have a problem with like like that i have to spend money but like i said why can't i spend it towards a massage or yeah. towards, you know, a manicure or these other services. Why do you make me eat at your restaurant? And they said, well, it's the only way we can keep it open. And I'm thinking, well, if it was good, it would be open anyway. Exactly. Because people from not even that, you know, that live around. So like, we know that some of the, some of our friends and stuff up and down the block will go over to Heritage, they'll go over to the Heritage Eagle Band and they'll eat there. So, you know, they're not plant-based or anything like that. I mean, happy to take any of the food I bring and stuff, but not plant-based. And so they'll go over there and eat. So it's like, and they say it's good. So long, I would agree, as long as it's good and you've got a good chef in there who then 
says, oh, you are plant-based? Well, why don't we put some options in there? We did that, you know, we did that when we were doing the summits here and that the Marriott, the chef that we met, that we met and stuff, he's like, well, my girlfriend's vegan. And we did, you know, all the food that was catered and everything else was all vegan, no oil. And then he actually put a couple things on the, on the menu. So why not? Mm -hmm. All right, 348. So we're going to, I'm going to do a little bit of a broil. And that's on top of the, the, um, the pasta, because I just want to have that, have just the, the tomatoes have a little bit more brown. Let's grab out. These are beautiful. And look at those leaves. Let's see, basil, basil, whatever we want to call it like that for a while. There was an actor named Basil Rathbone. I don't think they called him Basil Rathbone. <laughs> no. I bet somebody did. <laughs> That's funny. So I'm just going to freeze that after we're done. Just take them, wrap them up, pull the stems off a little bit so I can get it ready. Just an odd cut. Nice little ribbons. If you don't like the big ribbons, you can always just do a couple more chops. Ready to go. I was thinking about too that you know when we do we were doing this recipe and you had a little bit of extra zucchini over for the stuffing for the for the uh, squash boats. Could have used the rest of the zucchini too. That would have been nice. But zucchini and a little bit of hummus, especially when it's raw. Love it. Couple minutes and then we're ready. Squash boats are actually ready. So I want to get those and then we'll do the pasta. What was that interesting noise? What did you hear? I guess I mean, it was like, it's like, a, was like a pretty chime. Huh? No, might've been, it might've been our stove. Cause our, <laughs> this is 55 plus everything, every appliance and everything like the, the dishwasher, they all sing to you. They all have little songs to tell you that they're in a certain, like a certain part of the wash or they're done. So we've got lots of that going here. So that could have been that. Been yeah, that. it was a lovely so. song. Diana says they should make hospitals and prisons vegans. Well, there is a hospital, I believe it's in Beirut, Lebanon. I had the man on the show, George, I'll look up his last name in a minute. And he has an all vegan hospital in Lebanon. And I think they tried to do something with prison, but they said it was unconstitutional, you know? Mm-hmm. I could see that. But I do, let me look up the Lebanon story. That There is an all-vegan hospital there. It's called, you know, when you do almost 2,000 shows, you can't always remember. Every, a hospital that serves only vegan food in the Middle East, George, George, G-E-O-R-G-E-S-H-A-Y-E-K. So if you're ever in the Middle East and you need to go to the hospital, that's where you go. And, you're and actually, the there, there, okay. there are some hospitals now that ha at least have a vegan option. Don't know how healthy it is, but I don't think, you know, hus is hospital food known for being delicious? No. In they give you such small portions too. That's my biggest fear. If I ever go in the hospital, I'll starve. You know, I volunteer in one and it's like a little piece of fruit and a little scoop of rice and, oh boy. Our, our hospital is... You know, lots of things. They have a veggie burger, which of course is like your, you know, your regular ones that you can do you know, your morning star type of a thing. Lots of burgers. Like if you say, oh, I'd like to maybe just some mashed potatoes and corn, you're always going to have, you know, of course the, the milk and the, the butter, like the corn's um, floating in butter. So, all right. So I'm going to decorate these real quick so you can see them. And then we're going to get the pasta out. So I'm just adding some microgreens because, you know, eat your greens. They're good for you. Good for your gut. A little bit of pistachios. You could also do, like I said, the, the sliced um, almonds, but I just could not find any in the store. Yeah. Diana, Grapes. I think it's funny when they limit a serving of veggies to half a cup of green beans. That's why with the weighing and measuring program, seven ounces. I mean, I never eat seven ounces of vegetables. I eat everything by the pound. I eat the whole mm -hmm. pound when I'm eating a, you know, a veggie, but... I guess most people don't eat veggies. Uh, Mona says University Hospital in Denver also has a mushroom burger as well. They do. All right, then I'll we'll get the pasta out. So there, now see if you put that on the table and said, here, honey, this is our squash boats for Valentine's Day. 
I guarantee you they would be eaten. They're delicious. They look incredible. Pretty Hope pretty. You guys will check out the recipe. It is in the uh, show notes. And by show notes, we mean look right under the YouTube video. There's just not enough characters on the other formats, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram to post something that's 5,000 characters. Yeah, I was looking for my... Lost my uh, pot pad. Really, really hot. The other thing too, a little bit of the squash seeds. Don't want those to go to waste. They taste like pumpkin seeds, which is really nice. Fresh basil. Is that really one pot pasta or is it one pan pasta? I would say it's probably one, one baking dish pasta. Diana says that looks like a gourmet dish. And it's beautiful. See, so think about it. You've got, you know, you've got tomatoes, you've got, you know, your chickpea pasta. You, if you don't want to do that, spiralized zucchini up, you've got zucchini in there. You've got your fresh tomato sauce that you don't have to make. You could also, you could, if you wanted to, you could um, just make, you know, use a jar if you wanted to. Um, but it's always fun when you make extra pasta sauce because you can put it in the freezer and that's ready to go. But like I said, I was, I had a, oh, I know what I did with it. I don't want to be able to pull it up. All right. And it's ready to go. Yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> All right. Here. So we looked at that, but let's show you what this looks like. So pasta a la formiana. 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 Yeah, you get it. if you could have like our friend and stuff that was Italian, he would say it. He would be like, you know, pasta la formiana. Nice. Yeah, so is that, there, there it is. Is that going to be your dinner tonight for you, Jerry, and your neighbor? Yes. She's lucky. And then she'll, and then what will have happening is she'll probably take quite a bit of it home, and Jerry will be like, she took almost too much home. <laughs> We should have a little, we should have a video when they both come on at the same time. She would be fun. She, we all actually almost thought about inviting her over earlier so she could actually come on over because she would love it. Well, let's have her on next time. That would be fun. Yeah, she would, she's fun. She's a, she's a hoop. She's a, she's a ex-school teacher, but is more than happy to share her opinion and things like that. So she's very outspoken, which I love. That is so there, this is our Valentine's day. This is, this is like I said. Pasta, a la Formiana, and then we've got squash boats. So we've got two different, you know, two different vegetables, lots of starch, lots of good things. Guarantee if you put this on the table or if you did a party for, for um, Valentine's Day or even this Super Bowl Sunday, even though it's not junk food, this would get eaten. Mm. Pretty pretty. Looks delicious. Thank you. Well, you are a pro. So next month is March. Is, is You're going away next month, aren't you? Yes. I got to go visit my dad. Not got to, but I'm going to go visit my dad. I do that every six months to to um, Joplin, Missouri, right outside of Joplin, Missouri. You, does Jerry go with you? No, he doesn't. He's, he stays here and takes care of Georgie, you know, because that's that Havanese thing. So it takes care of Georgie and then I go and then he does some things on his own too. So right. yeah. he, must, he must starve while you're away. He does not. He's actually, he will do like his own like tostados and he does tacos. And then, you know, there's a couple restaurants that he goes to, you know, he likes Tokyo Joe's and, and those kind of things. So he does not starve. And then I always cook, I always cook like two or three things like a big lasagna or something like that before I go. So he's got it too. So he's lucky. You could have the neighbor over. That's true. She would, she'd come over every, probably every day for every, every meal. Enjoy it. Be fine. Well, we hope we get to meet them in the future. Thank you so much, yeah. Kelly. You make the most. You're welcome. Food. Thank food. you. Well, thank you, and thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. The show will be much earlier than usual tomorrow. It's seven thirty a.m. Pacific time, but you must tune in because it's none other than Dr. Michael Clapper of Moving Medicine Forward, along with Dr. Zach Burns. Thank you so much for watching everyone. And I hope to see you bright and early tomorrow. Take care, Kelly. Enjoy your Thank meal, you. Terry. Bye. Bye-bye. Um,